In the last video series, we really developed understanding of the ways we represent atoms, for example, different isotopes, and the way we quantify the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and things like this. Now we're going to move into more molecular level descriptions, or descriptions of compounds, as opposed to the elements themselves. So when atoms start combining together, we start needing to develop some new conventions, new approaches to naming and describing compounds made of multiple elements. And chemical formulas generally are the way we do this. Now there are different types of chemical formulas that give us different types of information about molecular or really submicroscopic structure of a compound. So formulas essentially always tell us about the composition of a compound, the types of atoms within it, and the number of those atoms, at least relative to each other. And sometimes we also get connectivity information about a formula, particularly when a structural formula is used. And these kind of levels of structure, the composition and the connectivity, are ways chemists think about the fine level structure of a compound and how structure relates to properties. So three different types of formulas that we will see in this course. Molecular formula uses just element symbols and subscripts to show the types and numbers of atoms within a molecule of a pure substance. So for a compound like diacetyl, which is a, a compound that gives beer and other foods a buttery flavor, the molecular formula is C2H6O2. And the way it's written here tells us that it's made of three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, of course. And within a molecule of diacetyl, we have two carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms. That's what we call the molecular formula. It gives us insight into the composition of the molecule for molecular substances. The empirical formula is different from the molecular formula in that it lists only the types of atoms present and the smallest whole number ratio in which they combine in the compound. So if we look at the molecular formula for diacetyl, for example, we see two carbons, six hydrogens, and two oxygens within a molecule. But if we divide all three of those by two, we see that there are smaller whole number ratios in which those three elements combine. And the empirical formula expresses those smallest whole number ratio. The re uh, ratios. The reason the word empirical shows up here is that in the early days of chemistry, before it was possible to elucidate molecular structure on some level, analysis of the elements within a compound and their relative amounts could only tell us the empirical formula. For example, diacetyl would only be revealed as CH3O. There was no way to understand that on the molecular level, it has two carbons, six hydrogens, and two oxygens. So the empirical formula for diacetyl is C1, essentially H3O1, where we've taken these three coefficients and divided by two to get really the smallest whole number ratios between the elements in this compound. So three hydrogens for every carbon, three hydrogens for every oxygen, and one oxygen for every carbon, for example, are those ratios. Structural formulas provide us with information about how atoms are linked together through bonds, and some information about where electrons are located in molecules. I don't want to go into too much detail on structural formulas at this point. This is the structural formula of diacetyl, and it tells us some information about how the atoms are connected. For example, the oxygens are connected to the two carbons. There's a symmetry to this molecule. It's kind of got two identical halves, and so on and so forth. As you progress through your chemical education, you'll learn a lot more about structural formulas, how to draw them from molecular formulas in a robust way, uh, how to reason from them, so how to make predictions about molecular properties, compound properties, and behavior based on a structural formula, and how to predict reactivity based on structural formulas in contexts where two molecules are combining together. While we're on the topic of structure, it's worth pointing out this fundamental concept of isomerism and isomers. Earlier we alluded to this idea that there are different levels of structure. There's the very kind of coarse level of composition, what elements are in this compound and in what ratio do I observe them. Then there's the level of connectivity, how things are connected to each other. There's even a level beyond that. Where are atoms located in space 
within the molecular structure, which can differ even in situations where the connectivity is the same. You'll see that if you go on and take organic chemistry later. Isomers are compounds that are the same in some structural aspects, but different in others. So for example, isomers can have the same molecular formula, but have their atoms be connected in different ways. And this leads to what we call constitutional isomers. They are identical in composition. The molecules have the same composition, same numbers and types of atoms, but they differ in what we call their constitution or the way their atoms are connected. This is a fancy kind of old timey term for the way their atoms are connected. Examples of constitutional isomers are shown on this slide. So acetic acid has the molecular formula C2H4O2. You can verify that by taking a look at the structural formula here. And methyl formate also has the molecular formula C2H4O2. And it should make sense to us as well that the empirical formulas are also the same. So if we think about the empirical formulas for these, The empirical formula of acetic acid is CH2O, and the empirical formula of methyl formate is also CH2O. So they have their molecular and empirical formulas in common. However, if we look at the structural formulas for these compounds, it's very clear that they're not the same thing. Their atoms are not connected in the same way. For example, this oxygen we might say is connected to hydrogen in acetic acid, whereas the corresponding acid, uh, oxygen and methyl formate is connected to carbons. So that difference in connectivity leads to differences in properties. However, some of their properties are the same. So anything related to the numbers and types of atoms within the compounds will be the same for acetic acid and methyl formate. But anything that depends on structure, which a lot of properties do, and reactivity absolutely does, will be different for these two compounds. You'll see isomerism returning as a, a really theme throughout your chemistry courses. And so this foundational concept of structure is worth keeping in mind as you advance and learn more about the ways we think about molecular structure.